The next initiative we're going to talk about is the one where students that graduate from our high schools um, that are not documented have the right to um, attend our universities and our Pima Community College for in-state tuition. Um, I, I, there is, to me, there's no other side to this. Um, and we are really, really happy. Today is the first time I'm meeting Karina Ruiz de Diaz. Um, she is the executive director of the Arizona Dream Act Coalition, a nonprofit dedicated to fighting for higher education access for immigrant youth and immigrant rights. She's a DACA recipient, born in Mexico, and has lived in Phoenix since 1999. She graduated from Arizona State University mm. uh, <laughs> in May 2015 with a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry. Karina has led and participated in countless actions locally and nationally, working towards uplifting the voice of the undocumented community. She has three U.S. born sons, aged 20, 12, and 10. She is also the grandmother of three U.S. citizens, aged 3, 2, and 1. Mazel tov. Her oldest son voted for the first time in 2018. Thank you, thank you. I'm really happy to be here um, with you all. Um, yes, it has been a journey. I, um, When I was 15, I lived in Mexico with my parents. They didn't find a job easily because they were older. And in Mexico, there's a lot of discrimination for job. Once you turn a certain age, you're like no longer uh, productive and it's harder to find a job. Um, my sister came to the U.S. in 1998 with her son escaping uh, domestic violence. And she called my parents and said, hey, there's work here. Um, you should come. So we embarked on the journey. Um, I remember we were stopped by Border Patrol a few times. And I didn't understand why my mom <laughs> decided to come in that way. Um, years later, I asked her and she said, you know what, um, I didn't know. I didn't know how we're gonna come. I didn't, like I heard people would go and there was work. So, and after that, after we crossed, she didn't want my siblings to come uh, to the US undocumented because she understood it was very dangerous. Um, we could have lost our lives crossing that border. And um, fast forward, went to high school. I graduated from San Islope High School in 2003. As an undocumented uh, young person, I heard of the Dream Act, um, and I thought maybe this is something that could give me a pathway to legalization, um, but that never happened. It failed in 2001, and then again it failed in 2010. Um, I had I, I was lucky enough to have a counselor in high school who encouraged me to apply to college. She didn't know if I could apply or not without a social security, but she said, go ahead and do it, and we'll figure it out. I did, I got accepted uh, to ASU, and as an undocumented person, I worked before E-Verify. Um, I worked, um, and every penny I earned went to my school. I didn't get scholarships, I didn't get financial aid, I knew I couldn't qualify, and as my family, I consider like middle class, lower class, but I knew that the key to get out of poverty was education. Uh, my parents had that in mind when they came with me in 1999. And so I attended college. Uh, it was very hard because especially in the sciences, I didn't see many Latinos and let alone undocumented people. So when I looked around for support, it was very hard because it was non-existent. And I was afraid to talk to people about my uh, immigration status uh, because of the fear of deportation. So it was, I remember, very harsh times. I already had a son when I graduated from high school. My husband got sick um, and I was just trying to make it um, as that happened, um, I heard in 2006 about Prop 300. Prop 300 passed by 70% of the electorate in 2006. 70% of the people who voted in that election voted yes for this prop. And what it did was a lot of harm to people like myself. Um, it 
and they passed it with very little money, I think like $800, something ridiculous like that. <laughs> um, and what it said is that you're required to show proof of legal status or citizenship in order to qualify for in-state tuition. What did that mean for people like myself? I was going to college already. My tuition tripled overnight. I could not afford it. And I had to make a decision of dropping out. I remember the tough conversation with my parents. It was hard because that was a dream for me to walk across the stage. I was gonna be the first one to graduate from college from our family. And all of a sudden that seemed unattainable. Um, I told them I was going to put it in pause, my, my graduation, my college, um, and I was going to continue working. Um, there was no sense in, um, uh, you know, dropping my job and going to pursue an education that I couldn't afford, and then I would have graduated and I didn't have a work permit. <laughs> so I told them, okay, I was grandfathered into my job because it verified and they didn't um, fire me. So I continued working, and in 2012, I was able to apply for DACA, and I learned that people like myself fought for that. It was in uh, former President Obama who woke up one day and said, okay, I'm gonna help these young people, even though he said he loved us, he said he couldn't do anything for us. And um, he, he actually was pressured by the community to do something. If it wasn't a legalization, it was a protection of deportation, which is what DACA is. It gives us a work permit that we have to renew every two years. We have to pay $575 in order to get that. And we have to be perfect. We cannot have like any crimes or things like that. And when that happened, I was like, okay, a light of hope. I'm gonna go back to school and finish school, right? And then we had a former governor, John Brewer, who said the day that we could apply, DACA recipients are not eligible for driver's licenses or in-state tuition. And I was like, oh brother, here we go again. Right? Um, and so we had to wait and fight for our driver's licenses, which we have had since, I believe, 2014. And the sky hasn't fallen, and our roads are more safe. <laughs> um, but the one fight that we couldn't win was in the Arizona Supreme Court. They unanimously decided that people like myself couldn't go to college because of Prop 300. In 2009, I dropped out of school, and then in 2014, I, I went back. One class a semester because of job Brewer. One class a semester. And I finished in May of 2015, and I got a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry, <laughs> which took 12 years. <laughs> Um, and not because I wanted to, but because of people not knowing about my story and thinking that I was somehow taking something away from people who were born here, which is totally not true. But I couldn't come out and say my story because of fear. The fear in the undocumented community is very real, and that's why people sometimes don't understand our situation. Um, so fast forward, I became a leader in ADAC, the Arizona Duma Coalition, which was um, a, a hub for me to get empowered. And I learned about a ways to um, change our realities. And um, with a lot of work from different community members and organizations, uh, Prop 308 came about and was put in the ballot for this November. And what it does is it, um, if, if a student was, uh, has graduated from high school in Arizona, and if they have lived here for two years, then they will qualify for in-state tuition because in this proposition, um, regardless of the status, in the proposition it does state that it eliminates that part of um, Prop 300 that involves uh, students. However, there's two pieces that people should know about Prop 300 that are still um, damaging our community, which is um, Prop 300 has three components. One is the eligibility for in-state uh, tuition. The other one is um, adult classes. So you, in order to have access to adult classes, you have to be a legal resident or a citizen. 
And in order to have childcare, that's the third thing, childcare for uh, mixed status families or undocumented families, ch immigrant children, you have to show legal status or citizenship. And these two pieces were left out of Prop 308 because of the reasons we have already mentioned. They want to make it harder for us to include many things. And, um, and so it's so important that people understand that. And yes, we want you to vote yes on 308. It's a first step for students uh, that have graduated from Arizona high schools. However, we need to keep fighting for adult education for immigrants and childcare for mixed status families. And that is the next step, but with that, I would like to encourage you to vote yes on this first step in our journey to have a more equitable and um, a more educated society. I mean, I wanna tell my grandchildren one day, like, can you believe that one day people didn't agree with your grandmother going to school? It's ridiculous. Just like what we talk about our children now about segregation in schools, right? So hopefully one day that's a thing of the past. And with that, I hope that you support Prop 308.